Hi again everyone, this is Dave Bosch with an ultrasound video about radial art line insertion. So I'm going to try to get through this fairly quickly and go through the several reasons why I recommend using ultrasound for arterial line. Uh, the Rebel EM website has a nice podcast on a, a, sh a small study that they did uh, with 40 uh, patients showing the differences in ultrasound guided uh, arterial lines versus landmark guided approach and I'll show you that the differences on the next slide but really what we're talking about here is saving you time um, the time to do this successfully on first pass success goes up dramatically or down dramatically uh, when you use ultrasound we don't put a lines in that often um, I personally put them all in and everyone who recovers from a code who's really shocky um, or has a brain bleed uh, for tight blood pressure monitoring. But in general, this isn't something that we do a lot. So I think um, when the, we look at the Rebel EM study, they used interns as their, uh, as their study participants. But I think that even though we're not interns, we could apply some of the same results to our practice. So I think we can. I think we can look at this and say, wow, their first pass success rate was, you know, 75% with ultrasound versus zero in landmark guided. Uh, their overall success rate was 100% with ultrasound. They had no complications and the attempts were about one versus about three. Uh, and then their time was about in half with the use of ultrasound. So I don't know if this applies to your practice, but I know that when I'm using the arterial dart, the arrow catheter, as soon as you hit that vein and the blood kind of wells up into the reservoir, you know, the next time you try to hit the artery, you're, you're not really sure if it's going to, if it's going to, you know, the blood's going to come up or not, or if it's clotted off. So, uh, you, you know, sometimes you get into this thing where you, you, you're just kind of fighting yourself trying to get to the arterial section and, uh, and you're just kind of getting frustrated and you have to get a new art, art line kit um, when you could just use ultrasound and do it one and done. The way you set this up is just like normal. So you're just going to put the person, uh, I usually tape their hand down to the side of the bed, maybe put a, a curlix uh, or a roll behind their wrist to prop it up. With ultrasound, all you really need to do is get the machine to the bedside, put a probe cover or a tegaderm over it. Um, this is an approach that I think you can actually uh, use a little more anesthesia. So I usually grab an insulin syringe and with a tiny needle, drop a little bit of lidocaine and inject it. And the nice thing is, is you don't really have to worry about, you know, infiltrating through the skin because you're not going to be palpating. You don't have to worry about losing that, that arterial pulsation with direct palpation. You can anesthetize the whole area of the wrist because you're going to use ultrasound to guide it. You get your arrow kit and have, have your nurses get your A-line set up ready to go because you're going to be in in no time. Next thing you do, get your ultrasound out. You set the depth shallow, two or three centimeters with the linear probe. Make sure you have your probe marker to your left and you're doing this as a transverse out of plane technique. You're going to do it as a step down approach. It's also known as the creep or the walk down. So this is what it looks like. This is actually too deep. I've got the artery dead center uh, next to a tendon, but I got a lot of space below. So we're gonna just zoom in and put the center marker on. There we go. So we've got the center marker on. Uh, you don't have to do this, but it's nice to line everything up. And then you've seen I've, I've decreased the depth. So now I've probably got two or three centimeters total. Again, this is the the technique you're going to use is transverse, about three centimeters up from the wrist crease. You can go higher if it looks better, but you don't really need to. This is it again. And now this is going to be an ultrasound video of the representation of the radial artery as the needle comes down and tries to hit the center line of it. And so as you can see the needle tip, the white flashy line there, it's coming straight down. As you move the probe slightly up, you might lose the tip, and then you're going to take the catheter and move it a little bit further until it hits center, just like this. And this is a representation of what I mean by the step down or the creep approach. On picture A, you can see the ultrasound beam pointing straight down and the needle essentially getting close to the artery, and you can see that there's a little tiny white dot kind of right on the top of the artery. As you puncture into the artery, the white dot become center. On picture C, you've moved the probe away from the needle. And so on the ultrasound image, you lose the little dot within the arterial lumen. 
And then as you advance the needle further, the needle tip shows back up as that white dot again in, in picture D. And so that's it, guys. If you're doing A lines, I strongly suggest that you try it with ultrasound. It will save you a ton of time, and your first pass success rate will go through the roof. Um, my only ask is that you don't do it like this uh, AI generated image here. Uh, you know, if you're doing A lines like this, uh, come see me privately. Um, please see my email. I'm going to have a couple links to other videos out there on YouTube if you have any further questions. Other than that, uh, just hit me up if you guys have any questions. Thanks so much for tuning in.